So good evening, everyone. And I'm really glad that we're all here and that the uh, Scala uh, community in Lisbon is uh, uh, like uh, back online. So I hope maybe next time we can, we can meet uh, together like uh, in Lisbon on some offline event. So my name is Artyom and I work for uh, Evolution Gaming as Scala developer. Uh, before my talk, I will share, uh, I will introduce the company a little bit um, uh, where I work. So uh, we are, uh, Evolution is a world leading uh, casino platform, online casino platform. Uh, we are mostly uh, Scala and TypeScript company. Uh, we, um, we have uh, about 1000 engineers across the uh, 10 locations, uh, including Lisbon, including Portugal, Estonia, Latvia, Belarus, Lithuania, Netherlands, and Ukraine. Um, we do uh, like to write functional, functional code uh, following uh, latest modern uh, approaches in a Scala community uh, like Tagless Final or even uh, Zio or uh, and etc. So we have uh, a really strong uh, community inside the company, uh, and we have a lot of experience writing uh, uh, event sourcing applications and event sourcing architectures. <clears throat> so if you're uh, interested to write a functional modern uh, Scala code, we are hiring uh, Scala developers in all locations. Uh, please uh, go and check out the link below. Uh, and also, I would like to share one uh, exciting news uh, today for you uh, that we are launching uh, Evolution Bootcamp. And um, if you don't know Scala yet, we, you're welcome to apply to our Scala Bootcamp and we'll teach you. Uh, bootcamp is absolutely free and all you need is just to apply and uh, uh, fill the form uh, and our HR department will contact you shortly. So let's begin with my presentation. So um, the name of the presentation is Event Sourcing and Production Mistakes and Solutions. I, I will not go deep about what is event sourcing, just briefly uh, touch this topic because I think uh, a lot of materials on the internet already there, so you can just go and refresh it. So we'll briefly touch what is event sourcing, uh, what is projections, and how we uh, uh, launched the event sourcing application in the beginning, and what problems we had, and how we solved them. So uh, the idea of event sourcing is kind of very simple. We do track and store uh, all historical changes of, uh, an, uh, of an application state. Like uh, these past decisions are often calls, called events. So hmm. events are just immutable facts uh, stored somewhere in your uh, database as a sequence of, as in the sequence uh, they were applied. And this is our source of truth. Uh, event store uh, have to have uh, we, uh, following invariance. Like we do uh, append only operations and we do not delete or update events from, the, from our event store. Event sourcing gives us um, uh, following advantages, like we can rebuild objects entirely from the uh, from the stream of events, like we can we can uh, time travel. Uh, we we have auditability out of the box. Uh, we know how we construct each state of the object. Uh, we have explicit lock, um, uh, and. Uh, this gives you a powerful tool for analyzing users' behavior and debugging and et cetera. 
Uh, so as events are mutable fact that have something has happened, it's also, uh, it, is only, it is usually in a, uh, represented as a past tense statement, like this has happened, like uh, here an example, some order submitted or play registered. And once generated and stored in our uh, event store, we cannot ignore it. Um, to reconstruct an application state, we simply need to apply all events one by one. Uh, or sometimes we call it fold the events. Uh, but uh, however, reading all events each time is very expensive. So we need snapshots. Snapshot is a kind of uh, intermediate state uh, of our aggregate somewhere, uh, usually also like in, uh, in database like Cassandra. So that we just do not read all events all the time. Like you can imagine reading like million events all the time. We need each, each time we uh, need to construct some state. It's very expensive. Uh, event sourcing is uh, often paired with this uh, CQRS concept, like command and query responsibility segregation. Uh, we'll talk like really briefly about it. Uh, command is just basically user's intent to modify something in application. And usually, um, uh, command uh, follow and follow and pass. Like we do send a command to our backend, we do validation against current state, and we either reject it or uh, either generate list of events that will be stored to our uh, event store. Like for example, we try to withdraw some money from our bank account, and it can be rejected, not not money, or if it's uh, succeeded. This validation succeeded, then we do generate and store a list of events. In this case, it will be like list of one event money withdrawn. Uh, so query is just uh, the different part of application that returns our uh, returns us information about objects. Um, query site. Um, Usually it's like uh, something we run um, queries against Postgres SQL, uh, some relation databases and et cetera. Uh, commands, um, commands and queries are usually follow it, like it, it's separate application parts or even separate applications at all. Uh, they do communicate with um, different databases and usually they communicate with different databases in, uh, for example, commands are usually asynchronous while uh, queries are usually synchronous. Um, uh, like in our case, uh, uh, commands, uh, command site usually communicates with uh, Cassandra database and uh, query site is with PostgreSQL. And also we, uh, when we talk about event sourcing, can, uh, we also have this uh, concept as projection data, the projections. Uh, some people may call it also views. It is a derived state of already observed state. Basically projections add no information to the system. They just uh, represent the information we already have in a, in a different way. So we can take a, take a list of, take a stream of our events and uh, build some uh, analytics uh, um, or we can uh, populate some uh, information in PostgreSQL that we actually need or build latest uh, system state. Um, and uh, the, how do we all implement all this? Like, uh, and here's our fail tale. Like, uh, of course, uh, first that comes to mind is ACA persistence. Uh, I think a lot of people heard about it already as it was, and it's still very popular in the community. ACA persistence gives you a lot of things out of the box, like, uh, 
uh, scalabilities and built-in behaviors, uh, snap, snapshot support, like uh, config, uh, configurable storages. Um, uh, so you can see here on screenshot uh, how easy and nice API uh, right now uh, with the ACA typed uh, event source behavior. Uh, and uh, together with ACA persistence, there is an ACA persistence query. Like we talk about projections, we need to uh, read events, uh, for example, uh, by some tags or that by some persistence ID. So ACA persistence query provides you such API uh, to query events uh, from configured storage by persistence ID or by tags. Uh, and also, uh, API for running and uh, scale your scale your projections, uh, as you can see also on screenshot here. Um, looks uh, awesome, but uh, long time ago, when the grass was greener, like uh, we decided to uh, use Acre Persistence Cassandra plugin to implement our uh, to our, uh, implement our uh, uh, query side projections. Uh, back then, it was uh, de facto standard to use Akka uh, plus Cassandra as a storage for events and snapshots. And Cassandra is okay for uh, storing a lot of information fast, append only. This is what we need, and it works perfect. Storing snapshots, well, we will talk about later, but in general, it's okay. But Cassandra is not really good for streaming events, especially when we, especially when uh, materialized use involved. And here we we got a little bit of issues with Aka Cassandra is Aka Persist Cassandra plugin because. Um, early versions could have only three tags. Uh, and uh, streaming uh, events by tag was implemented uh, by, by using Cassandra materialized use. This is a separate problem that I will talk on uh, next slide. And and once authors decided to uh, get rid of this mod use in, in, in next versions of uh, Aka Pearson Cassandra plugin, it uh, was really painful to migrate uh, already existence data, existing data to new format. And we, uh, we've got a lot of issues doing that and we actually failed. Um, most of the issues with Cassandra materialized use, as I told already, uh, related to data consistency between tables and views. Therefore, we have we had next problem, uh, like we were we were losing events, uh, especially when uh, an underload. And there is uh, also one great article: what is wrong with Apache Cassandra uh, materialized use that you can find on the internet explaining and uh, describing exactly issues that were reported and uh, to the Cassandra. Um, so what is next? Like, how do we fix all the, uh, like we have uh, Akapisis Cassandra, we do read events from Matthews, but we're losing them. How do we fix this problem? So the fix is actually quite uh, simple. Like let's let's stream our events from Kafka, not from Cassandra. And here comes a Kafka Journal uh, open source solution that is developed uh, in Evolution and is uh, widely used here in our company in games. Uh, and so Kafka Journal basically provides you natural Kafka streaming. Uh, it uses Cassandra still for keeping your events and snapshots, but it doesn't use Cassandra uh, materialized use. So, and it's quite easy to uh, embed it uh, 
but basically just substituting uh, required journal plugin. Uh, Kafka journal flow is following like uh, events go directly not to uh, Ak not, not to Cassandra as it was before. They go to Kafka and uh, separate application separate application like replicator replicates event from Cassandra from Kafka to Cassandra. Uh, I will not go deep uh, about Kafka journal internals, how it works. Uh, you can go and check out this uh, GitHub. And also there is a presentation from uh, Yaroslav Kalinko, an author of, of the library. Uh, he did good presentation about the Kafka journal. Uh, unfortunately, there, there is no recording saved somewhere on the internet, but uh, slides are really uh, gives comprehensive explanation how this works. Um, so now we got rid of this materialized use and all is cool. Uh, well, almost. There is a uh, event sourcing application brings you um, one more challenge is uh, choosing your aggregates right and isolating them. Um, keep keeping your uh, aggregates small. Uh, makes it easier to scale, plus smaller aggregates uh, prevent you from having a huge uh, snapshot stored in Cassandra, uh, which can be a, a problem for uh, people who support Cassandra cluster. Uh, believe me, uh, SREA team will find you and especially ones who maintain this cluster. Uh, when we store such uh, big blobs uh, in, in Cassandra tables, uh, it brings uh, a lot of issues uh, uh, with the Cassandra scalability and performance. So be careful. <laughs> and in case you're launching an event sourcing application uh, in 2021, uh, at least consider having a look into following GitHub uh, projects. First of all, I would like to uh, say that uh, there's an iCore library and um, uh, Vladimir Pavkin in, has incredible series of articles about event sourcing in general and how to implement event sourcing using iCore. I highly recommend to check it out and uh, it has six parts uh, and in the end, you will have a working application. Also, uh, ACA persistence, uh, there is an ACA, ACA persistence plugin that works with Foundation DB. Uh, uh, they, uh, uh, like uh, Foundation DB has their own limitations, but uh, uh, so also be careful uh, just. Uh, taking and using it, uh, read, read me carefully before. And uh, also, I would like to suggest like materials uh, uh, on the internet. You can find like any kind of materials about event sourcing, and uh, but uh, from from classical ones of Greg Young, and actually the, the second one that uh, why event sourcing uh, fails. I just watched it today. And it's also nice and like I highly recommend it. Also some classical books about uh, uh, designing applications are listed here on this slide. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I would like to remind you about uh, Scala Bootcamp. Don't forget to apply. And if you have some questions, I would be glad I would be glad to answer.